Welcome to Urban Takeaways. This is a film series where researchers and practitioners meet from different disciplines and knowledge fields. We will focus on inspirational stories from sustainable urban development, on method development and knowledge production across disciplines and sectors. My name is Nina Vogel and I will be your host. Today I would like to welcome Jonas Bülund. He is at the Management Board and Research and Innovation Officer for JPI Urban Europe. He's also a program coordinator for the Swedish Association for Innovation and Quality in the Built Environment. We will talk about the Strategic Synthesis Project, an explorative project of a group of researchers in action that want to deliver tools to support urban transformation. Welcome, Jonas. Hi. Hi, Nina. Happy to be here. Nice. And we we'll look forward to have a kind of a deep dive into synthesis with you today. I think for me, it's really an interesting and curiosity driven yeah, dialogue to figure out what can synthesis mean and how can it be helpful for like deep change processes? What is one plus one equals three? So what is the three about? So to start, could you tell me a bit about the synthesis project? How did it evolve and what are you doing? It's kind of an open collaboration in, in the sense that it has two core intentions, right? Uh, for first of all, to make better use of research. Uh, we're seeing that we're going a lot from linear kind of models of knowledge generation towards nonlinear models of knowledge generation. And, and in those, we see quite a need for synthetic uh, ways of working. Uh, if you're looking at transdisciplinarity, for example, or, or um, uh, let's say other kinds of co-creative situations that are necessary. And they, they usually create a kind of overflows, externalities, uh, if you're not careful. So that, that's one kind of thing, because we don't really have the kind of uh, uh, someone who's transmitting knowledge to a kind of receiving end in the linear sense that we used to think about it, right? The other aspect of the strategic um, synthesis project is to model a synthetic mind in a way that is to think about, develop, explore new ways of working, uh, both in terms of how projects may be working, but also the kind of output and, and the kind of requirements for synthesis there. Uh, um, but also going a bit beyond kind of method and, and, and looking at, um, let's say, how, what, what kind of mindset do you need in, in terms of working with sustainable transformations, sustainable urban transformations, when you have highly diverse from different sectors, disciplines, walks of life, ways of looking, uh, worldviews, if you will. Uh, and how do you work with knowledge integration or experience integration and learning in those kinds of settings? And this is becoming uh, more and more crucial to, let's say, cultivate and foster these kinds of approaches. So you talked about how strategic synthesis can make a difference and how it is linked to yeah, urban transformations, to change processes. And as we know, the, the change or the conditions we meet today are often really complex and wicked. So how can like, strategic synthesis or synthesis differently influence um, these conditions or, or help to cope with those? Well, I think first a kind of a, maybe I, I could make a kind of a, a caveat in a way. It's probably different in terms of knowledge, well, conventional knowledge, academic knowledge production. And, and, but it's not very different in terms of if you're, if you're moving about in society at large, <laughs> talking to people, how they are actually trying to uh, make things come together in, in a way, understand things, right? So, so that, that's one thing. Um, but of course, 
what we're talking about here uh, is about also formalizing and also to a degree kind of shaping approaches here. Um, one, one important thing is perhaps the way that synthesis could be, well, we could call it a connective tissue in a way, a kind of an infrastructuring between very different knowledge practices, experiences, learnings, etc. Right? So if you have all the typical multitude, uh, diversity in terms of actors, um, of people, uh, but also uh, diversity in terms of how they actually understand things, their ontologies and epistemologies, um, from professional ones to lay people, lay persons. Right? So in, in that situation, it is of course quite important to shape a sense of uh, doing synthesis differently than perhaps let's say the conventional evidence synthesis wh where you look at the field and you uh, make a fusion of um, knowledge at hand that is usually published in reports or in, in publications. Um, what we're dealing with in, in these other types of situations today might be more of a, uh, being comfortable with a, a certain type of agony uh, holding different ver different kind of views, <laughs> at times contradictory, uh, at the same time in your head, and and but also the the uh, let's say uh, dealing with uh, uncertainty. So th these are aspects that we have been talking uh, about, especially in kind of uh, from environmental movements, etc. But but here we're looking at so how how can you actually make a kind of a approaches out of this, right? Um, could I, could I um, follow up on, on this uh, connective tissue you called it? Um, I think that is really interesting, though when I think about it, how could we um, yeah, con relate to it in the long term? How can we maintain such a connecti connective tissue and, and care for it and, uh, and, and safeguard it? And maybe even yeah, create like a cultural shift around it. Well, <laughs> you you just said it. <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe that's the point. It's it's about it's it's a, in a way it's about a cultivation, right? If if you have these paradigms, if you will, in 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 how different societies develop, and and if we have at least a kind of an Northwestern world view, uh, building a lot on kind of modernity, and now we're trying to get away from it and into perhaps an Anthropocene way of looking at how we are on the planet. And in this situation, it seems like more and more, uh, and maybe the as a parenthesis, maybe the last four years, especially when we're looking at global politics. Uh, have reinforced this suspicion that we need more and more kind of a way, ways of doing synthesis constantly, constantly translating and fuse, fusing very different types of uh, experiences and knowledges in order to build more, let's say, robust, at least more robust research and innovation. That's kind of where I'm working, but but. Um, the point with robust in this sense would also be that it's not just about the words, the kind of how we talk about it, but actually how we build or cultivate, foster synthesis approaches that are also, let's say, non-verbal, perhaps. They could be uh, material in a way, a lot of cultural aspects, if you will. Uh, are usually materialized in different ways. It's, so these kinds of social material ways, in an abstract sense, would, would be kind of a how we'd have to do it on a long term, probably. But what you mention is there's a plurality of, of, of tools and approaches. Did you, in, in the project, in the strategic synthesis project, 
like develop with particular or develop particular tools or worked with particular approaches of doing synthesis? Well, so far we, we haven't developed approaches per se in the project, but we have tried to invite people to share, to kind of put their tools or, or maybe they didn't think of it as synthesis tools in, when we kind of got in touch with them, but maybe later on we realized that this is actually quite a good example of a, a way, an approach, a way of, of, of doing synthesis in, in different ways. So I, I think that that's where we have been doing. And, and there is a website, of course, where you have the uh, collection of these. So there, if you look more to the kind of arts and, and culture institutions, there are probably a lot more approaches and methods out there where uh, that, uh, let's say, if you put it this way, transdisciplinary research, for example, could learn a lot from. Mm -hmm. I think that is maybe the key, the transdisciplinary character of the examples you mentioned. And um, that brings me to, to another question of, do you think that doing synthesis um, is actually helping to, to measure the, I'm not sure if I would call it quality, but the gen genuinely or genuinity of doing transdisciplinary work? How are these interlinked? Well, yes, uh, of course, to, to just go back a little bit for JPI Urban Europe as a, as a transnational programming um, network or, or, or organization, we also, we are pushing transdisciplinarity or co-creative uh, approaches in the projects specifically urban living labs and, and perhaps what we have seen uh, is that when we're talking about transdisciplinarity it's not it's not always that you really have the kind of uh, ideal or genuine knowledge integration in the projects um, of course because it is of course and this is well known within let's say a, a debate and the kind of frontier of transdisciplinarity but but uh, there may be it may be less realized outside that kind of core uh, and that is it the, the kind of synthesis that you need it's really about how to integrate very different kinds of knowledges and 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 if you don't really succeed with that in a project, whether it's between scientific disciplines or even more crucial between, let's say, scientific ways of producing knowledge or practicing knowledge, formalizing knowledge and other ways of doing it. Uh, of course, there may, may be a bit fluid boundaries here, but uh, there are other ways of perhaps with visual languages, uh, visualizations, or let's say musical ways of, of also shaping experiences, etc. Uh, and and if, if you can't really integrate this, then it becomes troublesome to talk about it as transdisciplinarity, right? Uh, otherwise, you're just translating everything back into let's say a very scientific way of dealing with knowledge or producing knowledge which is yeah well that's just conventional research then which is fine but it's not really what we're asking for so even if it's uh, of course we realize it's it's very important for researchers to be able to formalize knowledge in their specific ways relating to their knowledge frontiers to their debates etc but if we're looking at the kind of reason for doing the kind of societal challenges programming that we're doing, we're kind of very, very explicit with we need to have um, all types of knowledge 
exploration generation out there and actually more or less on the go helping um, various institutions various situations to be able to transform into I don't know how you put it more sustainable ways of doing urban life what we're also looking at in these situations where you really need synthesis is also that it's it's difficult to have everyone engaged uh, you still have to work with those who really want to engage otherwise uh, there's also great risk of creating a big kind of co-creation fatigue out there we, we've seen this in, in different sectors in different top around different topics from time to time um, I guess also among researchers there might be a fatigue because researchers mostly aren't really trained in this way from the beginning so so the, there is a kind of a usually a learning curve uh, for many of them yeah I think that is a really, really important aspect of like the long term perspective here of the education and of creating like different educational programs, community of practices um, that help that we form like a new yeah, approaches from the from the beginning. And that maybe also would reduce possible fatigues um, as it is much more like you know, normalized in a way. But interesting to see like the different approaches from funding agencies to maybe knowledge institutions and maybe also different uh, collaborative projects so that we are working towards having a diversity of, of fora, maybe you could say, um, where these processes of, of learning, of knowledge integration can take place and maybe also of a lot of relearning <laughs> um, of existing maybe approaches. Um, really really um, valuable insights and a lot of food for thought um, you offer it here Jonas and to maybe come to enclosure for for today and for this conversation um, what are your your personal um, yeah, core highlights from this uh, collaboration of the strategic um, synthesis project and how would you, yeah, or how do you look into the future? What are your next steps? Um, well, a personal highlight might be, it's difficult to kind of place it on one occasion since the nature of the project is kind of, or it has been at least, that, that, that we're kind of, we're moving it along. Uh, uh, not low intense because it's highly intensive in different phases but we kind of just keep on thinking about it and, and there was some kind of aha when, when, when you realize that synthesis is actually one perspective from or a kind of a standpoint a way of looking at things that really starts to become everywhere both that you see the need for it, but you see that it's done in different ways, also as an integrating principle. And that, that's perhaps a bit of a highlight, which the kind of the importance of synthesis struck me. Um, I think that was really important. Uh, so what we are trying to do now, at least we're, uh, we're looking into how we can actually shape this also perhaps more in dialogue with not only let's say practitioners but also uh, let's say if we're looking at policy if we're looking at uh, different funding agencies etc uh, how can we also shape what we call instruments for this um, if we see this as a crucial need uh, and at least in Europe we have a new seven-year uh, programming phase coming along um, JPR Urban Europe is drafting a, a partnership proposal for Horizon Europe and um, where these kinds of aspects around synthesis will be crucial uh, 
so how can we work with helping both uh, cultivating in education of course in different ways but but also in the understanding in policy making of and how you can use this to also let's say for lack of a better word but 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 accelerate urban transformations not least urban transformation capacities which oh that's the name of a call we have open just at the moment but um, this is something that we will be intensely preoccupied with the next seven years at least there's a lot to do bef to or to to really uh, be able to achieve until 2030 as we I think we're all aware of but I think there we we share the same goal in, in urban futures to build transformative urban capacities and um, I, I look forward to continue this dialogue and also to maybe potentially see synthesis as a maybe key performance indicator for transdisciplinary work um, but most important idea. to to continue uh, the dialogue and explore and involve more people to do synthetic practice. Thank you for today, Jonas. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, that was really a pleasure for me as well. Thank you. If you want to know more about the Strategic Synthesis Project, about SOU Urban Future and about the next upcoming interviews, please follow us on social media, on the webpage and sign up for our newsletter. See you soon again.